If you've got a naked GoPro, then there have probably been times when you wished that there was an easier way to start and stop recording. Sure, there's a button on the camera that you can push to start and stop recording, but like, I don't know, I, I don't want to bend over and push the button. Or what if I don't want to walk over to the quad? It turns out that these cameras basically always have the uh, capability of starting and stopping recording by flipping an aux switch on the controller. And uh, a lot of people have asked me to make a video about how to set that up. So here it is. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Before we get into the video, I got to give credit because like here's GepRC's uh, manual or product page for their Naked Hero 8. By the way, I reviewed their Naked Hero 8 versus the Insta360 SMO 4K. And I'll put a link to that down in the video description if you want to check that out. If you're shopping for a naked camera, it's a pretty interesting comparison. So here's the user manual for the GepRC Naked Hero 8. And it's got clear instructions on how to solder this up and how to enter this information. Um, but People have asked me to make a tutorial, number one, because sometimes people would rather have me walk them through it. And number two, because like if you're not using this exact flight controller, then these exact uh, instructions are not going to work for you. So I'm going to give you just a little bit more generalized instructions of how to set up any of these cameras uh, without going into so much detail that I make it confusing. Hopefully and we'll see how I did at the end of the video. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our flight controller and we're going to decide which pin or which pad we're going to use to connect the signal wire to the camera. Uh, and the most uh, common one that you're going to be successful using is the LED strip pad or the LED pad on the flight controller. Uh, however, the beautiful thing about this is that you can use a lot of other pads. So for example, you can use any of the UART TX or RX pads and including if you are like, if you're using RX one for your receiver, Normally, you can't put two different things on the same UART. You have only one thing per UART. But the way this actually works is even if you're using RX1 for your receiver, you could still use TX1 for this function. Um, you can't use the video pad or the camera pad, and you can't use any of the 9 volt or ground pads. Those are power pads, not single pads. You can use any of the motor outputs. So here we've got motor 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If you prefer, if you have a spare motor output, you can use them. We're going to go with LED strip for this example, though. So you're going to solder up the power lead for your naked GoPro according to the manufacturer's instructions, which is usually going to be red wire to, to positive, black wire to negative, uh, VBAT. Some people also run the red and black wires off of a balance connector uh, if they want to move their camera between uh, quads. But that's not really going to work for this one because you're going to need to have this yellow wire permanently connected. Um, and then the yellow wire is going to go to whichever pad you've decided to use, in our case, LED strip. The next thing we're going to do is connect to Betaflight and go into the CLI tab. And as always, before you start screwing around, make a backup here for your configuration. So I'm just going to type dump all and that, that's going to dump the whole configuration and we're going to hit save to file and save that to like your desktop or somewhere where you can find it again. Then hit clear output history and type diff all. And that's going to be just the changes you've made to the configuration. And again, we'll hit save to file and we'll save that. And then a final thing you might want to do is type resource. And we're going to be screwing around with these resource mappings. And so specifically, we may want to, those are also in the dump all, but it might be helpful to do the resource and just save that to a file. So you've got those in a convenient place. Having backed up our config, the next thing we're going to do is we will type resource. And we're going to want to find the resource that uh, goes with the pin that we've decided to use or pad that we've decided to use. So in our case, it is the LED pad. And you might think that would mean you should use these LED resources, LED one and LED two. That is not correct. Those are the status LEDs and don't re reassign them. The, if you're using the LED pad on your flight controller, the resource you want is LED underscore strip. If you're using a UART output like UART1TX, it's going to be serial underscore TX1. That's UART1TX. Serial TX2 is UART2TX. Serial RX1 is UART1RX and so forth. And if you're using one of the motor outputs, it'll be here, resource motor 1, 2, 3, 4. Whichever pad you've decided to use, find that resource in the resource uh, command and make a note of this 
last uh, three characters, resource LED strip one, A08. So I'm just gonna write that down. A08 is my pin number for this pad that I'm gonna be using. So what I want you to do is go here, uh, type resource or look at your resource output. And I want you to see if there are any pin IO resources already defined. And you see here, there's no resource pin IO one. And for most people, that's gonna be the case. But if your flight controller has a VTX switch where you can switch your video transmitter on and off with an aux mode, or if it has a Bluetooth adapter built in, it may have a pin IO resource already defined. And if it does have a pin IO resource, I want you to make a sort of mental note of that. So if I were to look here and see resource pin IO one, I would make a note that pin IO one has already been defined by my flight controller manufacturer, and I'm not gonna use that. If I look here and I see resource pin IO two, then pin IO2 has already been used and I'm not gonna mess with that because it'll break some other function of the flight controller. There are four, four possible pin IO resources that Betaflight supports. And if number one is already used, I'm gonna skip it. Number two is already used, I'm gonna skip it. And then I would use number three. Pin IO3 would be the one I was gonna use. Since I don't have any pin IO resources here at all, I'm gonna use pin IO1 and I'll just make a note of that. Pin IO one is the one I'm gonna be working with. So the next thing I'm gonna type is what we see here, but I'm gonna type resource pin IO and then the number, in my case, it's one. If you already had a one, it's gonna be two. If you already had a one and a two, it's gonna be three and so forth. So resource pin IO one and then that pin number that goes with the pad. In my case, it's AO8, which was the pin number for the LED strip pad. Resource pin IO one, AO8, uh, and you'll see we also have re AO8 already assigned to LED strip. We need to type resource LED strip none, and that will clear that one. It uh, doesn't matter what order you do that. If it pops up that AO8 already assigned to anything, just do resource and this thing and none. Next, we need to uh, set up the pin IO box setting. And again, if you already had some of the pin IOs predefined, your pin IO box will need to be modified slightly differently. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type get pin IO box, and you're probably gonna see that uh, yours is equal to 255, 255, 255, 255, just like mine. But if you had a pin IO one already defined by your flight controller manufacturer, then this first number is not gonna be 255. The way this works is the first number controls pin IO one, the second number controls pin IO two, the third number controls pin IO three, and the fourth number controls pin IO four. So whichever pin IO you'd used, if you already had pin IO one and pin IO two from your manufacturer and you use pin IO three, you would modify the third position. In my case, I used pin IO one, so I'm gonna modify the first position. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type set pin IO underscore box equals 40, and then I'm gonna leave everything else the way it was. 40, 255, 255, 255. So here's one more example just to make it clearer. What if your flight controller already had a pin IO1 and a pin IO2, and you're working with pin IO3? In that case, your pin IO box might look like this. 40, that's pin IO1, 41, that's pin IO2, and then the third and fourth position would be pin IO3 and pin IO4. So we would be working in the third position, the other thing to keep in mind is that the user modes are defined by pin IO box 40, 41, 42, and 43. So if you see a 40 and a 41 already, you're gonna put a 42 in the third position or a 43 in the fourth position. So I'm gonna, in this case, I would type set pin IO box equals, I'm gonna leave the first position alone because the manufacturer already defined that. I don't wanna mess it up. I'm gonna leave the second position alone because the manufacturer already defined that. I'm gonna put my value in the third position. And in this case, it's gonna be 42 because 40 and 41 were already taken. And then 255 is the fourth position, which is we're not using that. And then finally, we're just gonna type save and that'll save all that. And the next thing we're gonna do is set up an aux switch, which will control this function. And in order to do that, we're gonna need to have 
our controller set up so that as I move a switch, one of the aux modes in the receiver tab moves. Now, that's going to be different for every controller, and I'm going to assume if you're watching this, you already know how to do it. If not, I'm going to put a tutorial, a link down in the video description to a tutorial that may help you out. So we've got an aux switch, uh, and it's moving an aux channel, aux 2 in this case. So we're going to go to the modes tab, and we're going to look for modes user 1, 2, 3, or 4. And again, if your manufacturer has predefined modes user 1 and user 2, then you'll be working with mode user 3. But in most cases, there will not be a predefined user mode, and uh, so we'll just be working with mode user 1. Uh, I'm going to hit add range. I'm going to move that aux switch, which will fill in the channel. And then I want to pick what position is going to activate that mode. So normally all the way up is deactivated. And then let's make middle and down be activated and save. And uh, that's it. Now we can plug our camera in and see what happens. Camera's plugged in. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't work like you probably think. The way you probably think it works is that when I flip the switch down to activate the mode, recording begins, and when I flip the switch up, recording stops, if only. But it turns out this is just emulating the button press. And when you press the button on the, on the, uh, on the camera, you don't hold the button down, you press and release. So the way to think of this is not as I'm activating and stopping recording, but the way to think of it as I am pressing and releasing the button. Ready? Press and release. See, it begins recording. And press and release. And it stops recording. It's a little confusing because, like, if you hold down the record button, what happens? I don't know. The camera does something else. If I just go like this, I'm essentially holding down the record button, and when I release it... There we go. Okay. So this is a little bit fiddly to get used to. You're going to have to get that timing down before you can reliably start and stop recording. And there is no way for you to know without looking at the LED on the back of the camera whether it is recording at any given moment. You can't just look at the switch position and know that it's recording. Uh, I wish it were that way, but it's, they're just emulating the button press. It's the simplest way for them to implement this. Uh, nevertheless, this is still, you know, potentially useful. You're just going to want to be careful that you don't like blow a shot because you accidentally didn't start recording. You're always going to want to visually verify that you're recording when you think you are. And you're going to want to freaking stay away from that switch while you're armed so you don't accidentally like and now you stopped recording and you're going to lose a shot. Nevertheless, if that's something that seems useful to you, that's how to set it up. And as a reminder, I also have another much more in-depth tutorial into that whole pin IO and resource function. There's a lot more you can do with it, but I wanted to try to make this as simple as possible. Uh, let me know down in the comments uh, what you think of this function. Is this something you would ever use? Is this something you've always wanted a tutorial for? And now hopefully you finally got it. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.